And trying something new so I thought I might do some like project videos where I talk about a specific knitting project or a specific sewing project and take you through from beginning to end don't know how long <laughs> I can keep it up because I'm not sure how successful I'll be but fingers crossed I will start with this one this one is a vintage inspired <laughs> it's not inspired vintage definitely vintage um, pattern I will show it to you but I can't really give you any more information than this and it's not very much so it's a sorry I don't like to talk with my face behind the item and I got halfway through a sentence it's a pattern by a company that I cannot find anywhere on the internet it's glinting walls and I have no idea about any of it <laughs> I can't share the pattern unfortunately the whole copyright fun and also the fact that there's no date I can't even know for a fact it's older than 70 years so you'll have to uh, live vicariously through me or knit vicariously through me I did contact uh, Retro Claude because she's amazing and she does lots of vintage and um, vintage knits vintage sewing patterns so I thought she might have an idea and she thinks it's from the 1950s and if I remember, it was the early 1950s because she went by the price, the hairstyle and, and the fact that it's in double knit. And apparently before then they didn't really use double knit that often and the price would be quite expensive, it's 60, so apparently that would be quite expensive before the 1950s and the hair apparently is the key to the whole thing, so we're going with 1950s. Um, but the weird thing about this is it says it's double knit, but the needle sizes required are mad. It's for my size, oh that was the other thing, it gives gives you one, two, three different um, chest measurement sizes. And before the 1950s it was really just 32 inches. I think you can find patterns that are 36 inches. Or 38 but you don't usually get them all together I'm just going with what I'm told <laughs> and what I've read this is 34 to 36 inch bust 36 to 38 inch bust and 38 to 40 inch bust so that was another giveaway but if you use number one UK needles for me that would be 7.5 millimeter needles and DK weight wool which seems mad to me but then it gets weirder not weirder crazier and I don't know imagine you're knitting this lacy cardigan if you can see it come on no it really wants to focus on my face I'll have to insert it if you have a 38 inch bust you need to use size nine let me check that uk double zero nine millimeter needles and dk weight wool i think you're just going to end up with like a fishnet situation going on i can't imagine how you would get the same result as if you use 7.5 and i still don't see how i'm going to get that cardigan out of 7.5 and DK weight wool. So, in true Emily Kate made this fashion, I'm ignoring that all. I'm going to go down to 
either 6 millimeter or 5.5 millimeter needles. And I'm going to use on my uh, knitting hand, because it's knitted flat, my knitting hand I'll use let's say 5.5 and my purling hand I'm going to use a 5 or a 4.5 so that my purling tension will balance itself out because from all my experience I figured out that when I purl everything comes out way too big because it loosens my gauge too much so I've tested this out on some German short rows and it worked out quite nicely so that's what I'm going to do and I don't mind if it comes out smaller because it's lace and again in my experience with lace it can stretch out so if I'm already if I was to use 7.5 millimeter and DK wool and it and pearl <laughs> and have lace I would end up with an enormous garment personally with my knitting so I'm changing the needles I'm also changing the yarn mostly by accident I just caked up this yarn and according to the internet when I purchased it it said DK slash light worsted and I thought that's grand I can handle that but then it arrived and it's really thick and I don't think <laughs> that's DK and I wrote down somewhere and I've been looking for it and I can't find it the um, meterage and it's definitely coming out as bulky so 100 grams came out at whatever bulky is so not entirely convinced that the website knew <laughs> what they were selling at that moment but I'm gonna give it a whirl because if I use smaller needles and thicker yarn then it should fill out like for me often when I knit flat I get quite a loose gauge and then the knit stitches are quite open but if I use a bulkier yarn it kind of sorts out that situation so hopefully you're following me here <laughs> so we're gonna give it a go see what happens worst thing is if it doesn't work I just rip it out and use the yarn for something else or try out a um, different needle selection so it's a twin set which I'm very excited about because I've always wanted to knit a twin set. The pattern pictures are interesting. It's damaged a little bit so I'm trying not to move it too much but hopefully you'll see this otherwise I'll have to take a picture. The seaming up of this jumper is quite a piece. <laughs> they um, didn't do a very like seamless or um, invisible, should I say, stitching of it together. So I'm slightly nervous what mine will look like if the picture doesn't look good, but we'll see. So it's a jumper to match the cardigan, but I'm going to start with the cardigan because yeah, the picture of the jumper makes me nervous. <laughs> Okay, so it says to cast on 54, so that's what I'll do. And I'm going to use 4mm needles for the cast on, uh, for the uh, ribbing. 4, But this is how I calculate, by the way, how much yarn to use. I wrap around 10 stitches on the needle and then use that. I'm sitting at such a weird angle. <laughs> to do this. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then I add a little bit because I like to be safe. <laughs> I always do German twisted cast on or old Norwegian cast on, mainly because I know it and I've forgotten all of the other ones. Yeah, usually I'm not sitting on a swivel chair in the middle of my living, uh, crafting room. I just recorded all of that and never actually pressed record so let's start again I did cast on and then I ripped it out because I actually wanted to have some extra yarn so that I can seam it up together at the end 
So I've got my stitches for the back and now I'm going to do ribbing for about three inches and then I will see you then. <laughs> okay, ribbing is done. So now to make the decision on which needles to use for the lace. Kind of hard to show you, but here we go. So I went with six millimeter needles for my knit side and 5.5 for the purling side. Okay, the back is finished. Looks a bit strange because it's not blocked. Also looks a bit strange at the top. But I'm hoping that's normal. <laughs> it's what the pattern says, I think. It was all going too easily. <laughs> this is the front piece, but just as I got to this next section, after the armpit decreases, the instructions have gone a little bit strange, so I'm hoping this is working. I think I'm supposed to be making the V for the V-neck. It's a bit difficult to show you on my leg when it's not blocked. But yeah, that's confusing. Hmm. Welcome to the chaos of my vintage knitting. <laughs> um, I realised that I haven't actually been very good at documenting this entire procedure uh, for a variety of reasons, but the one I noticed today was simply I just look a bit of a state and I think most of the times that I'm filming it's the evening and I basically look like I'm wearing pyjamas all the time. <laughs> But my husband is not here this evening, so I thought I would use this time to show you the updates on my vintage knit. I have filmed along the way, but my editing program doesn't allow me to do voiceovers. So I'm going to have to figure out how I can do a voiceover or just film and put the pictures and videos over top of myself. But you don't really need to know that because it will be happening right on this video. Basically, I, <laughs> I have made several mistakes on this journey. I thought it would be kind of simple because it's a quick knit, thick yarn, big needles, but I misread one section. Uh, the instructions went skew if on a different section and they like to intersperse knit this many inches and that knit this many rows but there's no gauge given to you on the pattern so it it depends what yarn I used as to how many rows would equal however long so sometimes it's knit this many inches sometimes it's knit that many rows and when you intersperse you get different results so the back piece told me to knit I can't remember let's say 18 inches so I did and then the front panel said, knit this many inches, knit this many rows, knit that many inches. So the front panel is actually longer than the back panel. And they are supposed to be the same length, but 
it said you had to decrease in order to get 12 stitches for this section. Uh, so I did, which then made it, let's say, the equivalent of 19 or 19 and a half inches. So <laughs> I just went with that. And then, yeah, then I did the sleeve. And you would think, as someone who knows how to sew and who cuts out pattern pieces, that I would know that a pattern for a sleeve goes like the bottom and then kind of gets bigger. Like you've got the rib section and then it goes wider and you slot that into the armhole. But I misread the instructions that said increase at the end of each needle. And I just read increase at the end of the needle. So I only did it on one side. And after I had finished the entire sleeve and blocked it and laid it out and saw that, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna put it together and see what happens. Because I really don't want to undo this. And I put it over my arm just to see. And it worked, so I'm gonna take off this scraggly old thing. And I will show you. It's a bit difficult because it's only half a cardigan. But I basically blocked the back piece, the one panel, and the one sleeve. And I've still got my safe, my safety line or whatever it's called on the panel where it potentially went wrong. So this is what it's looking like. This is the back piece. Let me show you. It smells so sheepy. Mm. And the sleeve. Now, I actually thought I'm pretty good at seaming, but don't know that I can still say that because I'm not convinced I did a very good seaming job, but it's quite fitting really because in the picture, in the booklet, the seaming is quite bad as well, so. It's quite tight as well. I'm using a bulkier yarn, like a thicker yarn. So you'd think it would be bigger, <laughs> but I have to pretend and hold this up and this is what it looks like and there's a big seam that runs down but you know I really don't care the only issue for me is that the sleeves are really long because I knitted it bottom up and followed followed the pattern, but I mean I followed the amount of repeats and how do I explain that? Other than misreading the stitch, I followed it how it was supposed to be and it came out too long. But it's probably going to be nice because I don't have anything that doesn't stop about here. So for my second sleeve, which I'm doing right now, I'm trying to reverse it so I'm actually increasing only once but on the uh, beginning of the needle instead of the end. So I'm hope, hoping it will slot into this side nicely. But I really don't think that it particularly matters. There's more of this going on than someone would go, oh, but there's a seam right there. And if they do, I don't care. <laughs> um, there's also going to be a button band attached, so it should come out maybe here. So it might not do up because it's quite small. The arm's eye is quite small as well, which is what I noticed because this is, yeah, as I said, about 19 or something inches high and the back piece is a lot lower. So where even is that seam? The back seam is here instead of up here. But again, I'm not ripping it out, so I don't care. What I have learned is maybe don't knit patterns that don't have a gauge on it so that I can't even guesstimate the row gauge or the stitch gauge. Like, it's a bit more tricky. And also, I don't know how to like read it, proofread it and make sure that I'm reading it correctly because I read that several times and still read it as knit one at the end of the, increase one at the end of the row or end of the needle. 
It wasn't until I cast on for the second one that I actually read increase one at the end of each needle. So after several times of reading it, it took me that long to figure it out. So I'm just happy that it's a thicker knit and a quicker knit that I didn't discover this on a lace weight garment and then discover it doesn't fit and have to rip it out. I'm going to try and pay extra attention on my next knit that I'm definitely reading the sleeve stitches correctly. But I think it's still going to turn out nice as long as it all goes together. <laughs> but that is the update and I will continue knitting away and hopefully I will take some footage to go along with this video. Otherwise this dedicated video will have a significant lack of footage. But there we go. I've never done an, a uh, button band that you do separately and then attach. So I'm slightly nervous about that, especially because all my gauge is so misc. And I've not seamed something since my very first jumper. And that was really easy. Like every seaming project I've done, it's just been two squares put together. I didn't have to worry really about <laughs> anything else. So this one is a whole new ball game with lacking instructions like knit the button band, attach. So yeah, it'll be fun. So I'm gonna get back to knitting my, what am I on? I'm knitting the second sleeve right now. Then I will knit the other side. And this is totally irrelevant, but I just use my new serger, my new overlocker to recover this dress. And I came across some uh, dramas. It, overlockers have a blade that cuts off the excess fabric. And as I was going down, I didn't realize you couldn't just like a normal sewing machine, turn the fabric and cut it, not cut it, and sew it, but it did cut it. So I had to make this dress an incredibly deep V. So now it's like a deep, deep V all over, deep V. <laughs> But it's better than not ever wearing it because if you watched my episode 30, I showed you this dress and I was not wearing it because it had gone really, the neckline was really strange. And uh, yeah, now I've saved it. So happy days. My battery and my SIM, not SIM card, SD card are screaming at me. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> More fun and delights with this pattern. Excuse my husband talking in the background. This is supposed to go here and then have four button holes, but uh, then it's not going to reach there, is it? So, oops. so I need to add another three or four. Yeah, maybe three. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah, having no gauge and just telling you to knit a certain amount of rows, it's really frustrating. <laughs> Grand reveal. Ta -da! So I finished. I finished my cardigan despite all the dramas, which I will go into now. I will just give you a quick little peek. Don't look for the mistakes. <laughs> I should have learned a 1950s hairstyle, but hey ho, I didn't. So my final cardigan is completed. I will now run through the mistakes, but I will start this with saying I love it and I'm very happy with it. And the mistakes are my mistakes, so my cardigan, I don't care. <laughs> but I'll just quickly run through some faux pas mishaps that happened along the way. So as I mentioned, I did change the needle sizes because it was recommended to use 7.5 millimeter. And in the picture, it is a very open gauge and I didn't want it so open. It was for a size 34 to 36 inch bust and I'm about 32. So I was okay with it getting smaller. That did kind of bite me in the bum because it did make it much smaller 
So it's very, very high up in the armpit and didn't, uh, it doesn't quite fit in this section, but that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, the pattern doesn't have a gauge. So it didn't, didn't tell me that I needed, say, I don't know, say 30 rows per four inches. It didn't tell me how many. So certain sections of the jumper, it would say knit blah amount of inches and other sections of the pattern, it would say knit blah amount of rows. But depending on which yarn you're using, the, um, sorry about the construction noises. Oh my gosh, every time. <sighs> I really hope that's not as loud for you, but my camera picks up noise really well. I'm gonna just keep going. Yeah, so basically, depending which yarn you have, you're going to have a different amount of rows. And seeing as this yarn doesn't exist on the internet, I can't even see how many rows, like what kind of gauge it had, what weight it was or anything. It says it's DK, but then the needles are so big that yeah, basically, I don't know how it was supposed to work, but anyway. Then the pattern was very confusing because for this side of the cardigan, it gave you one set of instructions for once you start decreasing at the armhole. And on the other side, it was different, di different directions that didn't match. And it, I had to rip out this section two, three times. And... In the end, I just had to try and fudge it together because the patterns didn't match. Which is probably why this company just doesn't exist anywhere. <laughs> if their patterns are so complicated for such a simple thing. But anyway, I think if I had experience in knitting vintage or even just flat garments, I could have used my knowledge and put it together and it would have worked. But I haven't really knitted garments that you insert sleeves and have v-necks etc so yeah lack of experience hindered me i think it would have been much easier to just figure it out if you had experience but hey ho so the front parts of this the front part of the cardigan came out longer than the back they're supposed to be the same length but you had to get to a certain amount of stitches on this section before you could bind off and in order to do that it made it longer so I couldn't shorten it faster because then it would make a strange shape and I needed those that amount of stitches to match the back ones so that made it longer and I could potentially have ripped out the back and made that longer but I just don't know how to do it not yet anyway so I just hoped and prayed it would work. So you can see where I seamed it together, more so on this side than on this side, because I learnt that I was doing my seaming <laughs> completely wrong. I was doing, for this side of the cardigan, I was seaming it together like a dress, like in sewing. I was putting right sides together and then seaming along. But really, you're supposed to have your right sides facing up, put them together and then seam them flat. And I did not do that. But I did do, do that on this side. Then what else? I also seamed together the shoulder and the side seam and tried to insert the sleeve like I would with sewing, which again is not what you do. You actually seam your shoulder and then you lay out your flat arm and kind of insert it in and then pin them together and sew it. Which leads me to my <laughs> second mistake, which I might have already mentioned because I'm not sure what footage I recorded. I messed up my armholes and I don't even know how. Like, I do know how, but seeing as I sew, you would think I know what a sleeve shape looks like. like this and then it gets thinner and I completely misread the pattern and where it said <laughs> increase uh, let's just say increase one at each end of the needle I only read increase one at the end of the needle so I only increased on one side which meant that my arm went like this and when I was blocking it and pinned it out I thought that doesn't look right 
because it was not right. <laughs> And I just thought this cardigan is just going so wrong. And not only because of the pattern, but I'm just joining in the fun. So some of the issues fit relate fit wise are the pattern, but I would say the majority are me. And <sighs> lessons learned. Make sure you understand the pattern. Think before you just do and then you will succeed. So I ended up knitting one extra stitch on the end of the needle for, let's say, this arm. So then I reversed it for this arm because I was not going to rip out the whole arm after blocking it. I just, I thought if it looks terrible, then I will. But I don't think it looks really terrible. This um, situation is my dress probably not the best dress to have worn under this because it has um, quite puffy sleeves. So let me... The sleeves are really big and so they're kind of making it look a bit strange. So ignore that, this. But in general, the sleeve fit into the socket and I don't think it looks terrible. There's a massive seam, which I don't know, is that what seaming looks like? I don't own anything that is seamed where I can see it, because the only other thing I think I seamed up was a Let Lopey cardigan, and that's just so fluffy you can't see it. This is also really thick wool, and I seamed it with the same wool, so I don't know if that caused that. Uh, but I am just assuming <laughs> that's what seeming looks like. I'm sure it would have looked better if it was the correct shape, because obviously the uh, lines look a bit odd because it's not the right shape. But again, I don't care. I would probably wear it open more because it... Yeah, I think the main issue right now is that this dress is scrunching up my cardigan. but. It's like a kind of 1950s dress and I thought it would go, but now I'm looking at this camera footage and I'm thinking, ooh, but hey-ho. Um, what else? Yeah, shoulders went wrong, but I learnt, I learnt that, <laughs> I learnt not to do that, and I reverse engineered it on the other side and I made sure I increased one on this side at the beginning of the needle and not the end so that they would look the same, so that the... Uh, lace would sit in roughly the same place as each other. Um, what else? Yeah, that one came out too long. Uh, oh, the button band. I've never done a button band where you end up, you sew it, so you knit it, and then you seam it on afterwards. I've only done a pick up your stitches and then do a button band, or one where you knit the button band at the same time. So this was new and I found on a YouTube, well I heard on a YouTube that you should knit it and then stretch it slightly. So I got frustrated because I couldn't actually see how long to do it. So in the end I knitted it with my little buttonholes and that was also a bit confusing because it said to do five buttonholes, but when I was knitting it, it ended up like here. And I, where is the... Basically, <laughs> there weren't enough buttonholes to reach where you join it together for the V. But then by the end of the project, I realized there were enough buttonholes. So I've got this extra one up here that I really don't need, but hey ho. So I didn't bind off or cast off the um, band until I had started seaming and then I could see how much more I needed because I pinned it well, actually I clipped it in place and then it was going to end around here but over the process of seaming it in and stretching it a little bit I ended up only needing to knit about three extra rows and then I could uh, seam it all together so it's not the, not the best job like that is pretty naff that was the first where I cast on 
but that one looks a bit better. <laughs> Let's be honest, seaming is not my forte. I didn't think I would be that bad at seaming, but uh, yeah, it's not, not something that comes naturally to me. Which is slightly annoying! I thought I would be good at it. Hey ho! Hey ho! Then I added three buttons because I could only find three that were the same size. I've got plenty in this colour, like white, creamy, um, pearly kind of colour that I got in a charity shop in the UK. But these were the biggest ones and they could fit through the hole and not pop out. But all the other ones are just slightly smaller. So seeing as I probably won't button it up that much, I don't mind having three. Um, I haven't checked like how big it is. I did stretch them out. I stretched all the pieces out quite a lot on the blocking mat because they looked quite small. <laughs> but I just I didn't want this to get any more open. Like it is quite an open gauge and it was supposed to be on 7.5 millimeters. And this is on six. So I think it would have looked more like the pattern on the 7.5 and it would have been bigger. But oh, I just don't want a cardigan that's just all loose. Um, yeah. So that's already a bit too loose for me. I would prefer it tighter. I was thinking about knitting the jumper with the leftover wool. <sighs> But the problem is, this is quite tight, and if I had it in a jumper form, it wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to have it open like this, and I actually would like to go down needle sizes to make it a tighter gauge. But that made a really loud noise. Did you hear that? <laughs> How strange. I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to add extra because the jumper has this, well, basically it looks like this. It's those two panels basically back to back with a little adjustment for the neck. And if I adjust the numbers, I know I won't understand how to do the neck. And I don't know how to adjust the numbers because it needs to have three lace panels. And if I add extra, then they'll all be off center. Like it won't I'll have this random stockinette section, which would look strange. So I'm going to leave that for now and come back to it when I'm more mathematically inclined and I know what I'm doing. And I've already got the yarn that I think I want to try out on it, which is a thinner yarn than this. So I really need to get a bit more savvy and know what I'm doing. What else can I tell you? It technically is a really quick knit, but I'm not a very quick knitter. I find it quite difficult to um, knit on needles that are bigger than 4.5. 5 is kind of my max, and then it gets just a bit uncomfortable and difficult and hurts a lot faster. So, although this was for normal people, without repetitive strain and without hyper extension and all that jazz. You'd probably do this in like three days. I did this panel in one day, but technically two because when I had to do the rib, that took me longer and the, the motion of with the purling just hurts more basically. So technically it was quite fast. I have got like nowhere on my husband's jumper. That takes about two hours to do about six rows. So it looks like that. And then this one is like three hours maybe <laughs> for the whole thing. So yeah, this is um, a lot more satisfying to make. And you feel like you've really progressed during the day. But then I would have way too many clothes. So that would just be impractical. All my other vintage knits are going to take a lot longer because they're on a lot smaller needles and smaller yarns. So don't get too excited that every month I'll just finish a vintage knit. But that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, I could dream. Anyway, I'm going to finish this and edit my video. 
and pop this up for you. Hopefully you enjoyed watching my um, progress and you can just laugh at me for my crazy silly mistakes. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!